So guys, today we're going to be talking about the basic medical necessities you should be carrying whenever you're bushcrafting, hunting, hiking, just the very basics of this. Uh, so just the very basics of your medical kit, and it's going to be covering two pieces of kit that are just extremely basic, but these two pieces of kit are going to be about 90% of what you're going to need. Now before we get into those two pieces of kit, I do want to talk just a little bit on why you should carry some medical gear. And I'm going to be doing a few uh, videos on medical stuff, but before jumping into the really expensive eye packs and stuff, I want to show you guys the absolute bare minimum of what you need in a survival or in a medical kit for survival. I also want to note the fact that you should always make sure to carry a little bit of something to help you in a medical situation. Because I know there's some people, and I don't want to bash on Dave Canterbury because he is pretty awesome and he definitely has more field time than I do, but he definitely is against carrying eye packs or really any medical gear at all. And that's great and that's fine. You can totally make that choice of your own will to not carry any medical gear whatsoever. But in a medical emergency, when you're out in the field, oftentimes this is going to be the most remote place. Ambulances are not going to be able to reach you. And you could end up dying pretty fast of a medical emergency. So at least having the bare minimum stuff. And this stuff is going to cover pretty much the really basic stuff. Due to little stab wounds, little cuts, scrapes, stuff like that. To help them to be kept from getting infections or getting infected out here and that turning into a more life threatening thing and just overall making sure that the wound heals as fast as possible because of course any wound you have while out in the woods limits your capability of being able to do work out here. So let's get, let's move over to the ground and I'll show you guys just the two very basic things that you should really be carrying in a outdoor setting for medical work. Okay guys, so like I said, this is the very basic part and I wanted to do this first part of this medical series as the absolute necessities you'll need and I didn't want to kind of like scare you guys or make you guys kind of shy away from carrying medical supplies by showing you guys my $200 IFAC because obviously that's not directly attainable by everyone and you know, I'm not necessarily saying you should go out and get a $200 IFAC but it can be really nice and so in the next part so let's get into the absolute basic things you should have. So the first and most important thing, and the reason why I consider this the first and most important thing is because it has a dualism. You can also use this for drinking water, but it's just a canteen or some amount of uh, good, clean drinking water. This is one of the most important things for preventing infection out here because most of our things, even our knives, you know, they get used, they get in the dirt. Sometimes you even use them to skin animals. So if you accidentally cut yourself, you are going to need to flush out a wound. You're going to need to clean that wound. So oftentimes the first big battle for cleaning out very basic wounds is, or for dealing with basic wounds is cleaning them out. And so you need to have some good, clean drinking water. And, you know, it's very easy to carry. You can carry this uh, and this duels as, of course, in a survival situation. If you don't cut yourself, you can always drink it. But make sure to have some good drinkable or drinking water, like drinking level water. Don't use pond water. And if you can at all, there are some different water bladders like Geiger rigs where you can actually pressurize the water. And pressurized water is better or even better because you can really get into the wound and help, you know, clean anything out. But for the most part, just like just running water over a wound will oftentimes be sufficient enough. But definitely make sure you have good clean water to help flush out or clean wounds because that is the absolute most important thing and the hardest thing to ha get here in the woods. And so you can find natural bandage material like this sphagnum moss that I'm on right now. You could find some clean sphagnum moss and use that as bandaging material. But uh, with water, you have to often boil it to purify it if you're going to be using stuff that's out here. 
So the next part is just carrying, I prefer gauze. You can certainly carry things like band-aids. I would kind of shy away if you're looking at the very basic stuff to carry. I would kind of shy away from band-aids. I carry a few in this pouch here and I like band-aids because they're adhesive and you know, they, they get the job done really easy, but they do have some limitations, primarily in the fact that they're not very size adjustable. And so there's a little bit of waste in that fact that you can't really adjust it to the size or if say you do get a larger laceration, if you have a band-aid that's meant to go around your finger, well, it's not gonna work for your larger cuts. Whereas this, I can cut a piece of this off and use it for a very small finger cut or if I get a cut on my arm that's larger, I can use more gauze to cover that larger area. Now with gauze, you have to keep in mind you need something to help keep it on there and oftentimes I'll just use something like paracord. Another thing that, depending on how much bleeding is happening, another thing you'll need to do is wet down the gauze. So another thing that's handy about the water is you can use water to pre-wet the gauze. And this is pretty important because if you don't pre-wet gauze, and like I said, it's bleeding a lot, what will happen is if you just slap this piece of gauze on there, and then when you take it off, that will oftentimes rip the clot that formed in that uh, cut. It'll often rip that clot off with the gauze. Whereas if you have pre-wetted gauze and you put that on there already wet, it won't allow the uh, clot to bond to the gauze because of course the gauze will be wet. Two things will cover about 90% of what will happen. I know I often, whenever I hurt myself, this is primarily the stuff that I uh, use. And like I said, oftentimes, I just get little cuts, little stabs, little, you know, abrasions. And so very easy to take care of with these two things. And like I said, that will cover most of what's going to happen to you out in the woods as far as medical stuff. Now, like I said, in the next video, we're going to take a look at the IFAC. Mine is a pretty pricey IFAC, but I'm going to be going over why I carry what I carry. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that plane in the background. You can never escape planes in Alaska. But like I was going to say, uh, th these are the two most basic things you should carry in a medical or in your backpack for medical scenarios. And once again, I'm absolutely against the whole thought of having nothing for medical because once again, I, it's not like I use both of these in those scenarios every single day for like medical or every single time I'm out here. Obviously, I don't have medical emergencies every single time I'm out here. These two are very basic and very easy to carry. They don't take up that much room and once again, they don't cost that much money, especially if you're already bringing out a canteen of water. Guys, that's it for this video. Don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe if you're not already. And you, if you want to see more awesome and original Alaskan content. As always, guys, I'm out.